spin, smash, crash. Huge. Kyle Busch's bad day continues, and he got Joey Logano as he was sliding down off the wall in turn number four. Nothing Kyle could do. Joey doing everything he could to avoid him, but could not. Let's see what happened to Kyle Busch and how Joey Logano got involved. Riding with Danica Patrick, it's up ahead. You'll see Kyle, the car just snaps out from under him again, like it did earlier. Stay to the bottom, stay to the bottom. All clear, all clear. He no down Kyle the hill, and when it does, Joey Logano was trying to get by on the inside. You'll see Joey coming along here. Thinks Kyle's gonna stay up next to the wall, but the car comes down, and that is amazing. Yeah, yep. Joey was all the way on the apron. He felt like Kyle was probably going to stay outside up next to the wall, but the car was just coming down the hill. And look at that 22 car just goes airborne. What an impact. Oh, my God. Wow. That is unbelievable. unbelievable. Trouble. Kyle Bush into the wall. Oh, no. Yeah, right. Brian Vickers also involved. Just fine and dandy. That thing destroyed the front. See if there's some contact here. Oh, yeah. Carl Edwards. Brian Vickers was down on the inside. Thought he was in a pretty good spot through that. But. It's not a situation that you can say because of the 99 getting in the 18 that that was Carl Edwards fault. He was holding his line there. That's just three wide racing and the chance that you take. That's a hard hit, hard angle. It's again a testament to the safety of these vehicles and all the things that NASCAR has implemented over the years. See Kyle trying three to get what top. he can here. Middle's covered, three wide top. Three wide. Yellow's out. Yeah, right. Really nice round here. Trying goes. to get past Paul Menard. AJ Allmendinger spins. Oh, and no. Paul Geyer and Gilliland have a horrible collision oh, right at no. the start finish line. Oh, that's bad. It is David Gilliland's car that comes to a halt in flames. Well, he's all in but there destroyed. Wendell net going down. That's Wendell a beautiful down. thing. Justin Algar as well as David Gilliland. Car gets a little squirrely with him, gets a little loose, and here we go. And it's on. Boy, when he comes down the hill and hits that Algar. 51, and that turned him in, that turned him right into a Gilliland yep. when he did that. And watch that red car shoot across the track. Right Damn. into the path of David Gilliland. And I guarantee you, Gilliland was on it, trying to get through it without getting in it, and he didn't quite make it. And that is an unbelievable crash. Gosh. Wow. I, I, I see wrecks like this, and I, and, 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 and I think about, well, back in the day, you wouldn't probably walk away from that car. They'd have to help you. Some spots. Four uh, wide. How about Johnny Sauter making a move for the fourth spot in that 21 oh, truck? Sideways. Oh. Townley and Nemechek get together, and the caution is out. More oh, contact. Out. Got him coming up. Crashing on the top, crashing on the middle. Big hit for Parker Kligerman. Yeah, he, John West Townley, who was trying to save his truck, made contact with Parker Kligerman, turned him straight into that outside wall talked about how hard these things are to drive in traffic and that was a, a, a perfect example of it. John West Townley was clipped by John Hunter Nemechek who it looked like might be got loose down on the inside. We'll have to look at a replay to make sure Townley did a great job of hanging onto his truck but uh, the oncoming traffic couldn't avoid him. This was just a wild scramble off turn two. Watch how close this is. Right there, John Hunter gets loose, hits Townley. Yeah, they actually squeezed him. Christopher Bell on the four in the 0-5 squeezed John Hunter. Johnny Sauter took advantage of it by getting down underneath him, but then John Hunter just couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, got loose and hit the... Look how close it was to Townley having his straightened out, but there was nowhere for Clickerman to go. What a hard hit that was. If Parker hadn't have come along. Getting crowded up there at the front right now with the 42. Oh, Whoa, trouble. Big, big, big crash. crash. Danica Patrick and Joey Logano. Oh, man. Eric Eric Holy 
Danny Spalding. Oh, heavy, heavy damage there on Danny. Those, those cars are killed. And Almarola piling in at the last second and going up in the air. Patrick Danica's quickly out. out of her car. Well, she's out in a hurry. Woo. No kidding. The thing was on fire. And looking rather upset. Joey Logano's car is not going to make it back to the garage. Neither is Eric Almarola. The window net down on both of those cars. Signal to the safety crews. The driver is OK. Now, Patrick and Logano were 11th and 12th. Almarola was back in 23rd. Cars stopped at the entrance of turn one. Let's see what happened here, guys. Oh, man, it looked like oh, the 22 just got loose. I think yeah. that. Oh, man. What, an, what a ride that Danica went Danica on. Danica took a heck of a ride into the, the wall. And then the just, 43 just plowed in there. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. I think he committed to the outside lane. Pretty big impact by the 43. As you could see, Almirola sitting in his car. He hadn't quite gotten out of the car yet. Eric Jones right behind them. Right behind Logano. Oh, something wow, broke. something happened on yeah. that 22. Something had to break. Keep coming here. There you go. 22 violently turned left right into Danica. Oh, right, oh front. right front. Yeah, I saw it blow the finger up. I, I think that was a brake rotor. Are you thinking what? Yeah, and that's why it turned left. I think he that disintegrated the right front brake rotor. Right as he went to the brakes, you saw it come through the hood. And what did that do? It just turned the car to the left because all it had was left front brake. It turned and the 24, and around goes the 77 of Jones. Almost up over the wall as they hit hard. That the 20 of Kenseth involved, as is the one of McMurray. A big wreck coming out of turn two. Inside, watch your inside. I will roll, guys. Four flat. And now the red is being displayed as the cars are stopped in turn two. You see them coming off turn two, and Eric Jones, car gets loose, puts a little bit too much wheel back to the right, and basically head on into the wall, and then major impact behind got him up in the air. I think that was Daniel Suarez, perhaps, that made the first impact. It looked like the 19 car, that orange and white car. But as we mentioned, the 20 involved, the one of Jamie McMurray, both involved in the playoffs, part of the round of 12. It says the big hit right there for the 20 car. You see Jimmy Johnson, the left-hand side of the screen, sliding through. Man, it's very good to see Eric Jones get out. That was a big, when those turn back to the right, look at this at real speed. Look how big this impact is right here. And that's so easy to do, Rick. Right along with Matt Kenza. Look at middle lane. He's still out there. You see three. Easy, easy, easy. Stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low. He is, and he is right up against that wall, but he made the pass. Oh, oh trouble. Hard at the big, wall goes big, Byron. Byron nose is in oh. heavy. Byron went in hard. Oh. Matt Kentz has piled into Byron right to, uh, to the 14 car right at the end there. 24, set down here on fire. 37, the one. What a, that was a huge wreck. Chris Busher involved. You can see William moving around a little bit. That's Ty Dillon. There. He's out of the car now. Matt Kenseth and William Byron climbs out after an incredibly hard hit. I'm not sure what happened, but remember, William only took two tires. Oh, boy, they're four wide there. Byron on the yeah, bottom. He just gets yeah, loose he did, underneath yeah, he the He just starts spinning out, gets into the... Oh, man, it just... Oh, my gosh, the car almost went over. Just hooked, nosed in. How many times have we seen a car land on top of, of uh, Ryan Newman? Ryan Newman. Yeah. I mean, that's two or three times I can remember. Too many. Remember, he was with uh, with McMurray down in Talladega when that happened. Matt Kenseth climbs from his car. Well, He's okay. That much damage, that kind of impact, it sure is good to see William Byron climb out of that car. It is, and this is hard into Ty the outside Dillon, wall. And it gets Dillon rammed. out of his car. Jamie McMurray has climbed from his number one. Um, 
Chris Bush are moving around in his car has not yet climbed out. Huge impact. Well, let's ride with Kurt Busch and uh, our Fox Visor cam. 31's up there, top side slow. Inside corner, 30 spinning. Come on, come on, come on. Miss it here. Keep coming. Big wreck here. Keep coming. Well, amazing views and amazing job getting through Here's there. the middle one, very top, very top. Wrecking up ahead. Keep it low, 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 low. All the way in the apron. Chris Buescher has now climbed out of his car. That's good news. Everyone is out and walking away. Look at Kevin Harvick. Just missed this. Oh, my. How close was that for Harvick? And for Kurt Busch also. Maybe a little damage to the right side, actually, from the 14. I think we now know where the Golden Horseshoe went. <laughs> we do tonight. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson going by. It's down in the grass. It's a huge wreck with all these. This, this happened in the front of the field, so it involves a lot of cars. Chris Buescher. Jeff, I wonder, did Bob. Oh, Hard contact. into the wall already. The 7 and the 20. Two of the main contenders for the championship. And Cole right. Custer. Cindric. Allgaier got loose, got into the back of the 20. Allgaier into the wall. The 20 also major damage. Didn't even get through turn two. You see Cole Custer, the focus on his eyes as he's trying to get back to pit road. Austin Sendrick, so much damage to the 22. There's the damage to the 20 of Christopher Bell. Justin Allgaier, major damage as well. You said it, the two favorites right there, Justin Allgaier and Christopher yeah, Bell. Another favorite, Cole Custer. Didn't even make a lap. Here's a replay right here. Seven and the 20, side by side. The seven just gets loose, goes up the track, makes contact with Christopher Bell. Bell backs it in the wall. Look at that hard contact for the 22. Oh, an absolute nightmare for the playoff contenders. Justin Allgaier and Christopher Bell right here side by side. The two drivers with all the points in their bucket. They have the lead coming into the race because of their performance in the regular season. And they're going to give it all back right here on the initial start of the race. 98 getting in there. Big hit right here by the 23. Wow, that was a big hit. Yeah, Michael Annette came in there and made contact. This is the danger. You know, both of these guys qualified well. They were right near each other, so when something happens, they take each other. But now an opportunity has been created for other people, people that needed a little bit of help. Let's see if they can take advantage of this. I mean, this is the – this is the last round with a shot to win a championship, and on the first lap, you get in a wreck. First turns. They couldn't even get through turn two, and Justin Algar an issue with his car. Take a look at it at speed. He just There he was. Junior said it. The seven of Algar just got loose, had to chase the car up the racetrack, made contact. Nowhere for all these guys to go. But I think that shows you, Rick, track position matters. We talked about it. you got to earn points. you got to get these playoff points. You got to charge hard as soon as he dropped the green flag, and that's what happened here. Algar just overstepped his bounds a little bit. Car got away from him. Took a lot of people with him. Get her driving here if we can. It's right along with Cole Custer, and take another look at how this all happened. Little check for watch easy, easy, easier. Low, low, low inside. Got collected up here. But Chase is going to be able to push that Atlanta car back out front. More wrecking. And around goes the 95. Oh, and the 27. Hard hit. Oh, the wall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, awful. Ryan Priest in the 37. Fantastic. That's Ryan talking. Glad to hear that. Put the wind in it down. Man, that's good to see. Yeah. That was scary. That's one of those wrecks that we're well, Watching it, or especially if you're Ryan Priest in that car, the angle at which you're approaching that inside wall was a violent, violent crash. Scary. Almost upside down. We see the 17. 
And look at the AMR team right there. And how about that? Frustration to climb out of the car, but still, man, what a hard hit. And glad to see him be able to climb out of that car on his own power. Such a dangerous sport, and we almost lose sight of that until something like that happens. Let's take a little replay and see just how all this began. There's Ryan's car. Back there behind Tyler Reddick. He goes to the middle of the racetrack. Got a great run going there. Looks like the 17. Oh, no, ahead of them, the 95 gets in the wall. Chris Ravel and Ryan Newman. Looks like Ryan Newman got into, got into, oh, Chris Ravel trying to get up in front of him. Then they make contact. Oh, poor Ryan Priest. Mm. We talked about he's had a string of last place finishes and wow, such a, Junior and I in this booth, when he was heading to that wall, we were both cringing. It's not, not what you want to see, but it's good to see him get out of that car. Look at this angle of impact. So violent, 3,400 pounds of race car just thrown up into the air after it bounced off that inside wall. You see the soft wall moves as it should, the steel barrier, foam, and then concrete behind it. Look how fast he's headed in the inside mm. wall there. No way slowing the car down. Helpless feeling. This shot right here, you see Newman's up the racetrack. Six has got to run. 95 comes up the racetrack. Right is the time that Newman's there. Ryan Newman involved in a very scary race or race crash in the Daytona 500 to start the season. Guys, it's, I don't think, you know, I think Newman right here is either trying to push him. I don't think he's trying to wreck him, right? He's trying to give him a shove. It caught the six as well. I think the 95 comes up so quick, there's nothing he can do. And then this slide is just so long. And I think we all know, you know, you mentioned it, Jeff. We were all quiet because we all know what is on that inside of the backstretch. So as violent as we saw. Anthony Alfredo got a little amped up after that incident. Listen. I think he's dead, dude. Like, he's just going to get us both screwed. He'd be faster if he ran the fence and not my freaking door. Calm down. Calm down. We still got a race to run here. He made it through. He's unscathed. He doesn't have damage. He don't have damage. Still got a race to run. A positive note, the fact that we can rip the bottom like that says a lot about our race car. And there you can hear Anthony settled down at the end. He'll restart 10th, guys. A uh, couple donuts on the side of that car. A couple donuts. It's going to be interesting restart. A couple new players at the front of the field. We'll see Haley, Moffitt, Hill, Annette, Brown. With it, only 30 laps left. Yeah, it's going to make your way through this field. 29 to go now as the green flag flies once again. Haley, not a great restart here as Ryan C gets off to a good start. And now they're four wide going into one. That's it. Oh, and around goes oh. a seven. Hard into the outside on, wall. Buddy, hang on, the hang seven. on, hang on, hang on. On the apron, the 21 of Anthony Alfredo was into the wall hard. He's upside down, sliding through one and two. Looks like the 18 back there of Riley Herbst also involved. AMR safety crew will get to Anthony Alfredo quickly here. This will bring out a red flag as they will work to get Anthony out of the car. The safety crews have worked really hard about how to get these cars flipped back over. You can see them, they're, you know, they're, they're down there assessing Anthony. That's what those guys in those blue suits are doing. And they already have the toe straps out, uh, getting ready to, as you mentioned, Jeff, flip the car over. Because remember, this driver is upside down in there, strapped in. 
Guys, he was talking to his crew on the radio, trying to assess uh, what to do first, unbuckle or wait for them to flip him over. But Anthony discussing with his crew uh, on the radio before he uh, unbuckled that part. Well, Dave, that, you know, that's, that's a difficult thing because you're in there and the only thing holding you are those belts. And he's talking to his crew, which, number one, that's great news that he's talking to his team. But how do you get out of that car? If you unbuckle your belts, then you know you fall straight down into the roof. You know these stock cars, 35. Yeah, roll him over. Just kind of pirouette it and get it back down on all four. They've got it up on its side now. And that's driver's side that it's sitting on. It's amazing how they're using the two different cables. One pulling, one kind of releasing to set this car back down. And again, they want to do this as gingerly as possible. Yeah, and I know, I know some people at home are, you know, probably do it quicker, do it quicker. But, you know, they've been in contact with the driver. Everybody's there in case something happens, fire or something else. They're all there to, 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 in, in case something were to happen. So although it would make us feel better to happen quicker, it's not the safest thing to do. An amazing job rolling the car back yeah. over. They set it down very softly. I never got on my roof in a race car, and I'm glad I didn't. Thank goodness. And it looks as though Anthony is unbuckling his belts now. As you see him climbing out of that car, and that is a great sight. We had just heard him on the radio. He was frustrated. Oh, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up as he exits the car. He's going to walk to the ambulance. They'll take him to the infield care center to check him out. But, guys, let's take a look at what happened. This was a big hit. Oh, we knew this restart was going to be crazy. We had fresh tires in the back, guys up front protecting. You see the front row accelerate, but two or three rows back, that seven of Justin Allgaier gets a big run, goes to the apron. The next thing we know, we're four wide on the apron, Jeff. Yeah, everybody's got to go. Everybody has tires trying to get in track position, and Allgaier was just on the apron, entered the corner on the apron, and ended up getting up into the side of the 21. Yeah, he ran out of, I mean, at some point, you have to make the corner. The corner has the banking. There were so many cars above him, he couldn't get up on the banking. It looked like he lost control. Take another look at it. Focus on that bright red or orange number seven back here. That's kind of where the whole thing starts. And normally you think you're going to get down here, you're going to slide up on, into the racetrack, but he just never had a chance to. Algar just kind of, I think, needed to give that spot up and get out of the throttle. But knowing there's a race win, if you can make it work, maybe ahead of you just chose to stay in the gas and look at this car it gets up on its side it's sliding you know these cars have roof flaps that design them to stay on the ground when you see a high speed roll over say a restrictor plate track but here that that wasn't really an aerodynamic thing the cars aren't going at top speed on this restart that's just the force of this car hitting that outside wall throws it up into the air and then jeff as we saw it slides to a stop on its roof yeah, and there was another car involved in this, too, that got him up and upside down when he did hit the wall. Take another look. Here's the 18 of Riley. Herbst, he gets into him. Both of those young drivers are having good nights tonight. And when you see a car gets upside down, Jeff, it, you know, it takes me back to the technology we don't talk about so much. You know, from a five-point to a six-point to a seven-point seatbelt harness, more, all of those points that are added are down around your hips and legs for this reason, to keep a driver pulled straight down in the seat so they don't go up when a car gets upside down. That's a big impact. I mean, you know, it's obviously it's dramatic when he rolls over, but the, as you said, Steve, the impact is what rolled him over. You know, the advancement inside these race cars, seats, you know, the, the limit of the movement of the driver is so important. The belts you just spoke about, the seat technology, the head surrounds, the Han system, all of those things designed to limit mobility, to keep everything intact with the driver. Just such a different world today. And the wall that he hit, it's a safer barrier, absorbs energy. Just such a different world than it was 20 years ago. And you talk about safety advantages, the, 
just this year, we saw that huge wreck with Ryan Newman at Daytona. One of the issues with that accident was oil coming out of the oil tank to put a gas car, put a valve in place to limit that. You see this huge accident for back in the field. All of them slide down. Got one upside down, so take your time. Go to the very top here. A lot of debris in the middle. Cars are gone. Cars are gone in front. Demeanor of a spotter. And then this right here, the best sight we've had today. Forget racing to see this driver get out, give us two thumbs up. 21-year-old Anthony Alfredo. I'll tell you, Anthony's done. Obviously, the best thing about his night was him getting out of that race car, but done a such, such a good job in that race car. He's Look at the given damage. car owners a reason to give him a